driver than me. Hey guys, this is part of the channel what I like to do. It's my monthly roundup of news and information that's gone on about Uber or other taxi trade related things. So in today's lineup, we've got Uber Expanded. We've got the deal that Uber's made with Tesla's rival. We've got GMB Union News, some interesting news there. We've got news about Wolverhampton Council. Hey, you didn't see that coming, did you? We've got Uber's alternative transport methods that seem to be turning into reality. We've got the dangers of being a driver. And we've got my favourite part. You can't do that, mate. And also a brief on Uber's profits so far. Uber's continuing to expand rapidly throughout England. They've now just been granted a license in York, despite massive protests from local cabbies saying they didn't want them there. The York Council has seen fit to give them an operating license. Uber has also expanded to Northampton, where they said that apparently when people were opening their app expecting to get an Uber, there was none there. So they've been granted a license to operate now there. They said, they claimed they were letting 1,500 people down a week. That's how many people were trying to get an Uber there. And because they didn't have a license, they couldn't fulfill it. Also, the Darlington Council is now deliberating whether or not to allow Uber to operate in their city as they've put in a license recently. So Uber is continuing to expand and expand. Uber has announced a deal which aims to bring 100,000 electric vehicles made by China's BYD into the fleets and cars. The two companies have said they're going to offer Uber drivers incentives to switch to electric cars, including discounts on maintenance, charging, financing, and leasing. The multi-year agreement will be rolled out first to Europe, America, and then it's going to be followed in the Middle East, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. The announcement comes to sales around the world have slowed down and Chinese car makers face higher import charges in places like the US and EU. The company aims to bring down the total cost of EV ownership for Uber drivers, accelerating the up uptake of EVs on the Uber platform globally and introducing millions of riders to greener rides. The two firms said this in a statement. Now, personally, I'm not a fan of EVs. I don't like the idea of always clocking me miles to see if I can do the next job. Now, some people say you don't have to do that, and it's not a problem. But I've spoken to a few people on TikTok, and um, they seem to always be paranoid about how far they can go. I don't know. I'm I'm still going to stick to me petrol car somewhere I can just go, fill up straight away, and off I go. What do you think, guys? Are you tempted at all by this EV incentives? Will you be thinking about getting one of these? Have you already got an EV and you might change to this one because of the massive discounts? Let me know in the comments. Now, you may remember that I signed up to the union and I made a video about the benefits from it. Well, recently, I've, re I've received via email the first actions that the union's taken while I've been a member from it. Now, you'll have to forgive me for my eyes moving, but I'm going to read it directly from the email so you guys are aware for non-members just what these guys are attempting to do. So, the email states, Dear colleague, further a recent survey of our members, we are pleased to announce that GMB have submitted a claim on the member's behalf to Uber. The claim consists of the following elements. First, driver security to stop the automatic suspension of drivers when allegations are made. If a rider makes an allegation and it's proven to be false, Uber will pay full compensation to the driver for the period they were suspended. That's a good one, isn't it? 
if a driver is suspended because they've uploaded documents that have deemed fraudulent or rejected for fault, and it's later found out that they were fine, they will also attempt to get compensation for this. They're also going to negotiate a fairer rating system. The rating system isn't great, is it? Uh, they're going to conduct a joint review on driver numbers and the impact of, of what the driver numbers currently are on each individual earnings. Speaking of earnings, they submitted a survey and 55% of their members claim that their earnings were significantly lower this year than last. And over 80% claim that their earnings were either the same or lower compared to last year. Therefore, the union is calling for Uber for greater transparency in how the earnings are calculated and the dynamic pricing and the behaviour on setting the trip prices. The negotiation on the portion of surge that drivers get and making that more transparent than just a little icon that says it's a surge. And as prior to the agreement with GMB, they're going to revisit the engaged time, including and not limited to the drivers waiting to pick people up to see whether we can get money when we don't have a driver. They're also going to negotiate the overall earnings for all drivers. All this sounds great to me. Again, these guys can only do this if people are joining the union and they're getting the funding. I'll keep you posted, as I said I would in the video about the, the union itself, on things that they're going to do, things that they were successful in, and so forth. We'll ram them in the news again. Surprise, eh? Okay, so what many of you, many of you should know by now, they decided to remove door signage from any Wolverhampton licensed car, right? So I've got footage of the actual council meeting. So I'm going to disappear for a little bit while you watch that footage and then I'll be back. The key message that I want to say is that um, if you've booked a Hackney carriage or a, a private hire vehicle uh, in advance, or, or even if you're getting into a Hackney carriage, always look on the back of the vehicle. The way that you can tell that a vehicle is licensed is through the uh, council license plate that's on the back. Um, the, uh, it should match the registration number of the vehicle. It will tell you how many seats the vehicle's licensed for. Um, it will tell you the expiry date of the license. You need to make sure that it's uh, in date as well. Um, but this is the, the key message that both the government and, and that ourselves really want to get across is that um, people shouldn't be using that door signage to identify a licensed vehicle. It doesn't, that signage doesn't really mean anything. It just means that someone's put a sticker on the door. That what you've just heard was the justification that they've used to remove the door signage. You know, the stickers that you stick on the side when you're pulling up, oh, it's an Uber, oh, it's an Alpha, an old Delta, whatever it is, whatever the operator works for. Personally, I think they want to remove the door signage to allow easier ways to dual operate a local firm and Uber, for example, so you don't have to keep getting out and switching them around. Anyway, this has not gone unnoticed. There's been a number of complaints lodged with various different councils to the point where one of the council's MPs have actually brought it up in the Houses of Parliament. Let's watch this one. Uh, I would like to raise an issue and call for a debate on an issue affecting taxi drivers and their passengers, uh, not just in Harlow, but in other parts of the country as well. Uh, as a repercussion of the 2015 deregulation bill, uh, taxi drivers are no longer required to get licences uh, for authorities in which they operate in. This means that um, different, uh, different authorities have different uh, standards. It means that these uh, taxis are checked less regularly. Mm. And some uh, taxis, uh, some authorities do not require the same uh, signage that we uh, do in Harlow. Uh, this, of course, has a huge impact on the taxi trade, but also the safety of passengers, particularly in the case of signage. So can I ask the Leader of the House if we can have a debate on this important issue? Yeah. 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 Leader. Well, congratulations for raising such a big issue no, on uh, his first Someday, outing yeah. here in uh, the Commons today. Uh, I know, as a, the Member of Parliament for Manchester Central, what a big issue this is 
for taxi drivers and others worried about safety and other issues uh, when the, we see this uh, happening. I will ensure that he gets a full response from the Department well, yeah, right. of Transport. Uh, and I think it would make an excellent topic for an adjournment debate, which I think would uh, attract wide attention from across the House. Yeah. So to me, it sounds like that Wolverhampton removing the signs was the straw that broke the camel's back with a lot of people. And it's now going to turn up in for a debate in Parliament. What's your thoughts, guys? I mean, signage on the side of the doors is a bit, it's a bit old fashioned now, isn't it, really? What's your thoughts? This one has absolutely blown my mind. Electrical flying taxi journeys. That could be cheaper than Uber rides. So there's a firm that's based in Bristol and they're currently in the experimental phase of testing these that you're seeing on the screen above. It's going to be basically taxi rides where people can go, book it, and away they go. Bosses reckon that it's going to be cheaper than Uber rides once it's fully functional. And in the year, by the year, 20. 27. Did you get in one of these? Don't think I would. Right. And in other news, I didn't even know this was a thing, but Uber has dipped the toe in the water for Uber taxis in Venice. But they're not taxis, they're boats. People can hire an entire boat in Venice for as little as £103 and just you know, plod on in it. People in Venice think that the waters are going to become more and more crowded. Well, if they've got a council like Wolverhampton, I'm sure they will be. Now, while doing the the research for this particular topic, I did gather a lot of photographic evidence and a lot of video evidence, which appears to show Uber drivers being targeted by protesters. Uh, there's been a lot of dangerousness going on recently in the UK. I'm sure you're aware of it. So you do have to be careful out there, guys. There is a lot of danger. Now, in the US in particular, there's been this new uh, craze going around where they have been ordering luxury Uber cars. And when they've been turning up, they've been getting carjacked. So there's a lot of things going on at the moment revolving around. It's not just Uber drivers. It's all taxi drivers. I've got multiple pictures of cars smashed. I've got one where the car, where the car's been set on fire. I've had one where the car's been turned over onto onto its roof. Now, the reason I'm not showing you pictures of these is because I don't want to violate any of YouTube's rules. Okay, guys, so this is the part where I point out what other drivers have done that they shouldn't be doing. So first, we've got... Cross-border operation in Hull led to spotting of dangerous tyre threads from a Wolverhampton private hire driver. Here you go. Here's a picture. So then we've got a cross-border Wolverhampton private hire checks in Blackpool found unlicensed father and son working. So first it was the dad was not licensed at all. So he was done for that, and then the son was done because he was allowing his dad to use his licensed car for hire. Then we've got a cross-border car that actually was licensed cross-borders. It was licensed by TFL and the city of Wolverhampton. Can't do that, mate. Okay, so it might seem like I'm picking on Wolverhampton. I'm not. So... Liverpool City Council found this driver to have awful threads and he was suspended. Okay, he was a Wolverhampton plate as well. Look, I'm not picking on Wolverhampton plates. It's not my fault that that particular council and the plates and the drivers are always turning up in the news. So Uber announced today, actually, Tuesday the 6th, that... Its revenue has grew by 16% compared to the same quarter in 2023. And it's land landing at 10.7 billion. The figures come in higher than expected. Well, do you know what? 
I expected them to be quite high. And if they are making that kind of money, can you please stop offering me trips like this? And this? And this? And this? And this? Anyway, if you've enjoyed it, guys, give us a like, give us a sub if you're new to the channel, and I'll catch you in the next one.